Hey there, Westerosi, and welcome back to Mike Meeple's Painting Poorly Miniature Painting Tutorials for A Song of Ice and Fire the Miniatures Game by Come On Games. Today, everyone better grab their gloves because we're tackling the enigmatic undead ranger who is totally not Benjen Stark, Cold Hands. Cold Hands mounted model comes riding in on a great elk, and I'll be referencing a picture of an actual elk to draw my colors from. And even though most of you are tuning in for that model, the techniques I'll be using will also help you paint up the infantry version of Cold Hands as well, which I'll be painting concurrently. I'll be priming Cold Hands and the Elk with Steinel Res Black Primer and my airbrush. If you don't have an airbrush, any black rattle can primer will work. Once that's all dry, it's time to start with base coats. We'll be doing things a little differently today and starting off with a dry brush of neutral gray by Vallejo all over Cold Hands himself. When you're dry brushing, you want to grab a flat or round brush like this, and after you load it up with your paint, brush most of the paint off onto your hand or the table. Then you'll just gently brush across the model, going against the grain as it were, to really pop the details of the model. Once the dry brush is done, take some blue-gray pale by Vallejo and apply another dry brush, but this time only paint the upper half of the model. This will help convey a progressive highlight from the dry brushing. Then take some field blue by Vallejo and paint the skin of his face and hands. Once that's done, we'll be taking some hull red by Vallejo and painting all the belts, straps, saddles, reins, and sword handles. Next, we'll be setting up three colors to eventually blend into a gradient on the elk. Beige brown, cork brown, and dark sand, all by Vallejo. Mix them individually with some Lamian medium by Citadel. This will thin each color, but also act as a retarder to keep them from drying out as we blend. Start with the darkest, beige brown, and paint the lower portions of the elk's rump. And while the beige brown is still wet, paint a small portion above it with cork brown before taking your dark sand and painting the topmost portion of the elk's behind. Use a moist brush to blend the edges where the colors meet to create a gradient. And when that's done, you can paint the legs of the elk with beige brown. For the front of the elk, you'll be doing the exact same thing, but using chocolate brown, flat earth, and cork brown to create the same type of gradient effect. When you're all done, it should look something like this. Next, you can use some dark sand to paint the antlers and his longbow along with the arrows in his quiver. Now after that, I used Prussian blue to paint the feathers of the arrows, but you can use whatever color you want. Then mix together equal parts chocolate brown and black and use that to paint the blanket underneath the saddle. Now 
Next, take out your plate mail metal by the army painter and paint the swords, metal rings on the reins, stirrups, the bit the elk is chewing on, and the metallic portion of the scabbard along with any belt buckles. After that, get out your brown rose and paint the tongue and gums of the elk. Then get some German gray by Vallejo and paint the elk hooves and eyes. Next, we'll be using some neutral gray to paint the rocks on the base. And if you're sadistic, you can also paint the stitches in Cold Hand's hood using dark sand. Once that's all dry, it's time for shades. We're going to start off with Dark Tone by the Army Painter, and applying a thin layer to Cold Hands himself, along with his swords, the saddle, and blanket, and anything else of his riding rig. I'm specifically using Dark Tone instead of Null Oil because it'll help mute the dry brush a little better, but you absolutely can use Null Oil, it just may take a few coats. Once that's done, I'll be using Light Tone by the Army Painter to shade the rump of the elk along with the antlers and his bow. Next, we'll apply some Strong Tone by the Army Painter to the legs of the elk. Before using Soft Tone to paint the front half of the animal. Once that's all dry, it's time for highlights and finishing touches. I'll be starting off by highlighting the elk's rump with some dark sand. You'll also use this color to highlight the antlers and the longbow. After that, mix together equal parts dark sand and ivory by Vallejo and paint a secondary highlight, making sure you paint a slightly smaller area than what you previously did. And if you really want, you can use some pure ivory to add a third highlight. Next, take your cork brown and highlight the face of the elk. Focus on the brows above the eyes and the general musculature around the face.
To add a second highlight, mix together equal parts dark sand and cork brown. Then we'll take some chocolate brown and highlight the blanket underneath the saddle, making sure to paint where the fabric bulges outward. Mix together equal portions of chocolate brown and flat earth by Vallejo to add an additional highlight. And finish off the blanket with a hint of pure flat earth to add some very small third highlights. Next, take your beige brown and highlight the legs. And use some cork brown to add a second highlight. After that, mix together equal parts hull red and orange brown to highlight the leather. And you can also use a touch of orange brown to apply a smidge of a second highlight after that. Now we'll apply a highlight to the hands with some field blue. Then we'll be using German gray to highlight the snout and hooves. You can also mix together equal parts German gray and neutral gray to add a second highlight. Next, we'll paint out the rim of the base. And apply some dark earth texture by Vallejo. We're also going to apply a hint of this texture paste to the bottom of the capes to add some weathering effects. Once that's dry, I'm going to give him a light spray of matte finish and glue on some frozen grass tufts by the Army Painter.
I'm also going to be using some brown moss, which you can find at any craft store, and tearing off small bits of it to glue onto the base in order to simulate dead bushes. For the snow effect, I'm mixing together gloss varnish, battlefield snow, water, and PVA glue in roughly equal portions. Mix that together until you get a toothpaste-like mixture. Apply that mixture in globs on the base for as much snow coverage as you want. Sprinkle on some white static grass while it's still wet, and this will help create a fluffy, fresh snow look. We'll also be applying the base snow mixture to certain areas of the models, such as the boots, bottom of the cape, and the underbelly of the elk. And that's it! I want to give a big shout out to all of my patrons whose generous support helped me make quality content like this. And if you're interested in becoming a patron yourself, information on how to do so can be found in the description for this video along with links to all the supplies I used today and a link to my blog where you'll find more tutorials for games like A Song of Ice and Fire the Miniatures Game. And if you like this video and would like to see more, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, Westerosi.